talk to us about the transitory effects that happen within the, this particular first quarter reading, the business inventories, the consumer bit lackluster. Are you thinking that this is a concern? Well, you know, for, first of all, I guess maybe the headline is that the, the number was so good that I'm out here talking about it in a thunderstorm, right? <laughs> so if you hear some booms, uh, that's what it is. But the, the fact is that uh, there were some transitory uh, effects, like you mentioned, inventories, those often reverse themselves in the next quarter. Uh, the consumer spending was a little bit disappointing. But the headline of 3.2, as you know, was just a blockbuster number. And if you add to that, the, the first quarter has tended to be about a percent below the rest of the year over the last 25 years, then and, you know, this is really something that should make people revise upward their forecasts for the rest of the year. I think that the way I think about it and the way it all works out in the end is that the inventories are going up because the retailers are expecting consumers to consume more than they have, as you mentioned, over the last uh, few quarters or few months. Uh, and we saw a little bit of a sign of that in March. And uh, if consumers do ratchet up their consumption and we get more like 3% uh, consumption growth in the second, third, and fourth quarters, uh, then that would be consistent with the income growth numbers that we're seeing. So the flip side of this, Kevin, though, is we did see a slowdown in non-residential investment, and a lot of folks are pointing to this. And I have to point out, too, that we had seen this slump in residential investment prior to Trump taking office, and then it kind of went up, and it peaked right in June, uh, excuse me, in March of last year, and that was right around the time uh, the trade issues started to crop up and I'm wondering uh, how much of an effect has the trade war and just the the fact that we haven't resolved this issue yet weighing on growth and do you think we'll return back to some of those levels uh, once we do get a deal done well I think that the trade deals for the latest uh, quarter or, or you know the promise of them but also some of the actions we've taken you know are clearly visible in the data as you know we got about one percent of the growth came from an improvement in the net, net export position I think the net exports improved in part because people were hoarding Chinese products ahead of the tariffs last year, and then there was a big decline in imports from China. Also, uh, some of the resolution of disputes involved people buying soybeans and so on. You can see uh, agricultural exports, you know, surprised on the upside as well. And so I think that the trade for the for this quarter, you know, clearly is a net positive. Net positive for this quarter. What about the general underlying growth rate as it stands? Where do you see that going for the next quarter? Well, you know, our forecast, uh, which we published uh, just a little while ago for this year, is that GDP growth would be 3.2 percent, and uh, you know, quarter first quarter growth was 3.2 percent. I'm not, you know, that's lucky, right? I mean, nothing ever matches that closely. But but if I say it's going to be 3.2, and then I get a number that's 3.2, then I'm not really thinking of revising much, other than the fact that I thought Q1 would be low because of this residual seasonal stuff. So I think on net, this is a very very positive report, and we haven't even started talking about the the fact that you know inflation was so tame in, in this report, and you know what good news that is. Well, Kevin, I also want to talk about the market reaction here because right now the market is still pricing in pretty heavily a rate cut uh, by the Fed in 2019, a full quarter point. And I'm just wondering, what's the message from the White House to the Fed right now? Well, you know, my message to the Fed is I respect your independence and I won't give you monetary policy advice. <laughs> uh, my analysis of the data today is that inflation surprised on the downside. And as an economist, as I think about why that might be, I think that we've got non-synchronized growth right now around the world. That The U.S. is growing much faster than, say, Europe, and that there's a little bit of a risk that we might be uh, importing deflation into the U.S., and it's something that we have to pay close attention to. I like that you say you respect the independence of the Federal Reserve. There's, there's talk at the moment, of course, we're still looking as to who might be joining the board anytime soon. Stephen Moore is who we understand has been going to be nominated. Are you, do you stand by that sort of nomination? Are you worried about the politicization of the Fed debate that's going on around him? You know, I, I think the world is Steve Moore, but, you know, nothing, nothing's official right now. That That's an ongoing process. And, you know, when a nomination is sent up to the Senate, that's the appropriate time for the CEA chair to discuss the candidates' uh, pluses and minuses. And so, you know, Steve's an old friend, but, the you know, the nomination is not, not official right at this moment. And so, and so I can't go into the details of it. So, uh, Kevin, I want to go back to your comment about inflation because we did see, uh, I guess, uh, you know, folks who think that the Fed should either uh, cut rates or at least stand pat did seem to point to some of the inflation figures that we got out of the GDP report today. And your colleague, mm -hmm. Larry Kudlow, earlier today, uh, basically uh, pounding the table again on this issue. And I'm just trying to wrap my head around, uh, as an economist, how you're viewing this data, which seems to show a propensity mm -hmm. to the upside, yet we're still seeing pressure in some circles to get the Fed to sort of move in the opposite direction. 
Right. Well, well, the, you know, as an economist, uh, which you know, I guess that's the only way I look at everything. You know, and sometimes it drives my family crazy. But as an <laughs> economist, then you know, I would draw a supply and demand curve and say that we've just had a supply shock, a positive supply shock from supply side policies, and that shifts you out, and so price pressures are to push the price down because you're going down the demand curve. And the prices have gone down more than we expected, uh, in part because the supply shock, you know, shifted the curve more than we expected, perhaps, or about what we expected, but more than the market expected. And so inflation is right now looking very much under control of this latest report, and that's consistent with the supply side modeling that we did. When we modeled the tax cuts back in the fall before they passed, then we expected core inflation to drop to around 1.5% because of the supply shock. And that looks like that's about what's happened. And so if you're wondering what's going on in this economy, how is all this stuff happening, uh, then think about, well, just you got a supply shock, uh, a cut in the cost of capital, about 9%. Uh, investment spending went up relative to trend, about 9%. And prices went from two to, or inflation went from two to one and a half because of the downward uh, price pressure from increased supply.